I'm gonna be showing how to, how I make these flower petals and um, it's forge welded together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna taper this out to a point and then I'm gonna bend it down so that um, I can forge weld the taper into the rest of the body. So that's a good heat. So I'm just gonna make a kind of a stubby taper. And next I'm gonna bend this over and double it back on itself. So this is the first step. And I wanna make it just like this one. Um, or as close as close as I can. So I've made a mark here on the anvil that lets me know how far I bent bent this one over first. And then I, when I bring this out, then I'll put it here and then just eyeball that and put that there and bend it around. Once you get it tapered like that, that little tiny tip is going to heat up a lot faster than the rest of this bar. So you want to be real careful to have that way past the hottest part of the fire. So the next thing is to forge weld this piece together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the fire, but not give it any air. And I'm gonna make sure to have this tapered part will be on top, so it's not um, in the direct line of the air coming up. To forge weld this together, I'm gonna get it up to near, uh, melting temperature and um, I'm going to bring it out just at the right time and hit it with the hammer. For doing tiny little things I just like pull it out and just tap it with a hammer to set the weld and then put it back into the fire and heat it up again before I start forging it any because um, if you just tack it and then you keep forging it out, you could break the weld by stretching it. So, but this one, this one is big enough that I can hit it a few times before I put it back into the um, forge. And I'm gonna use this, which is 20 mule team borax. It's just regular stuff you can buy in the laundry department of the grocery store. And um, so when I put it on there, it's gonna melt onto the hot surface and go all in between the crevices and stuff and cover the area that I want to weld together. That keeps the oxygen out. Oxygen also is your worst enemy when you're forge welding. So you always wanna make sure you have a really good bunch of coke around the piece that you're welding because if, if that coke is, is burning and using oxygen, it's absorbing oxygen in your basically a oven that you've created with this um, coals. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit because um, this, this makes clinkers which will clog up my air and use up space that burning coke is not using. <laughs> 
and it just messes stuff up. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna put this just over here. that I want to weld together. I'm gonna let that melt. Good. When you're doing this, there's several things to look for to know if it's at welding temperature. I can see now that the bottom piece is like bright yellow but the taper piece coming over this way is not. It's darker in color. So I'm gonna turn that around now and put the, the taper on the bottom. And I'm looking for indications that it's at the right temperature. And what it is, the the, your piece will be the same color as the hottest part of the fire. And you can see the flux on there is another indication that it's at the right temperature because it will be shiny and kind of swimming around a little bit. Then you can take this poker here, which is hot on the tip, and actually touch it. Can you see that it is sticky? So I know that it's at the right temperature. Ready? I just tacked it a little bit. So I'm gonna put some more flux on it. Just a little bit where I want it to weld. put it back in the fire. And I'm, gonna I'm holding it up here like this so that um, flux that did not melt will actually melt down onto the piece instead of getting knocked off into my fire because, again, clinkers. And when I put more coke here, I wanna, um, try not to get any green coal in there. I want to have uh, pretty much inside of that burning area, I want it to be coke. This has to be hot or it won't stick, but I can see that it's at the right temperature now. So see those fumes coming off of it too? Can you see that little tail just disappeared? So now I know that it's welded because that's the little tail and it's all staying the same color. So it has kind of become all one piece now. So it's all together now, but I want to straighten it up. There's also a little bit of a crack going down that way that you can still see. Sometimes I'll leave those because I think they're it's cool that you can see how it's made, but somebody might say, oh, she didn't get that well good. So from, I'm not going to put any more flux on here now, but I am going to make sure that I have um, the piece at welding temperature before I hit it anymore. So I think it's kind of like how I want it to be, but I've got to uh, refine it refine the form. I'm trying to get all that flux 
off of it. So I've got a rounder hammer and I'm gonna use it right here. First, I want to decide which is the upside of my pedal, and it's this one, because it looks the most symmetrical. See, this one's a little lumpy over here. It'd probably be okay, but I just like to choose the side. Now, I'm gonna weld that tip together See those fumes coming off? Getting rid of that. I decided I like this side better. Well, I'm gonna do that a couple more times to try to get that down to a little point, but um, I'm not going to make it super pointy right now because I have a lot more to do to fan the sides out. If I make that point too sharp and small, I could burn it off. I can work it at a little bit lower temperature now because I need to, because this is kind of finicky what I'm gonna be doing now. Um, but I definitely wanna keep everything warm because if it gets cold, it's not good for it. Put it here and just start. at this bottom transition here. Um, this one's pretty, pretty much the same on both sides. This one is too. It's nice to try to be real symmetrical with your stuff, but if it gets unsymmetrical or, <laughs> um, sometimes you just gotta go with it, you know? I really like uh, details in my work and I pay a lot of attention to them because I do everything so up close like this. And I like to think about when I'm making something, somebody coming into a gallery, looking across at everything and saying, oh, there's a, there's a steel umbrella over there. <laughs> and as you walk up closer and closer to it, you can see more and more details the closer you get. And I like to keep having details to kind of draw people in to look at my work. So I'm trying to hit in between the edge of the flower petal and the edge of that split because I want those to be thick. Because I want this to be a really, um, a substantial flower. So I'm trying to get the, the metal that I need to make it wider, mostly from the center of it and push the thicknesses to the side. And again, as that gets thinner, it's gonna heat up quicker, so I gotta be real careful not to burn those cheeks. 
So now I'm just gonna bring that point out longer like this one. And um, I, have a, I have a finished piece I'm gonna show y'all in a little bit. Um, made with one of these flowers and I titled the piece Talons, like a bird of praise, Talons. these files here these these two are so old they're dull as dirt but they will still cut hot metal they won't cut hot metal very good but <laughs> but I don't want to take too much metal off of here I just want to just want to mess with it I guess I have a little bit of a lump right here. So, um, I've got this other file that still has a little bit of life left in it. And it'll file a lot better than that other one. So, I'm just going to take... Take that lump off. When you use a, a good file on hot metal, it ruins it. So now this file will join the collection of uh, hot files. It's not very symmetrical, but I really kind of like it. The split in the middle is is pretty much uh, closed and that's okay too but you can see that it's thicker there thinner here and thicker out here anyway so that's how you make one of those guys now I'm gonna cut it off before I cut it off I'm gonna figure out where I'm going, how long I'm going to make the stem. I'm going to make the stem about this long. So, I'll mark it where I want to cut it while, while they're cold. So I can put it right here. And then just go mark it. Now I'll know when I'll know when I get it out I can catch it on that mark. So I can put it right in that mark that I made and give it a couple of good hits and then back here and then roll it around in there and then keep going around in that groove I wanted to leave some material stuck in the middle because I want to show you something. Otherwise, this wouldn't take so long. And so 
So can you see how it's cut off, but then there's this, this little zip right in the middle of it there? So I make all the petals, and then I carefully put them on here and, and then weld it, tack weld it on here. And um, that's why God gave us MIG welders, is what I tell people. <laughs> you know, it's just, if you got a machine that can stick things together, you're not smart if you don't use it. What I was just talking about, about cutting that piece off and leaving that little zip on the end of it. So that's what I did with the, the ends of these. And then I just used those as the center of the flower. Doing this part of the flower, I had to hold, hold it like this by one of the petals, which is more dangerous. So things can get out of shape, kind of like this one did right here. It kind of slid over to the side, but I'm happy with it. I think maybe I thought it was a failure, <laughs> which is why it stayed over there in that M&M can with the rest of those ones for years. I pulled it out and I started looking at it and I thought, it's cool, you know? Flowers are not always absolutely symmetrical. They have a little bit of a personality each each petal has a little bit of its own personality. When I'm teaching, I always tell people to pay attention to these little details that you see when you're working on stuff because you may come back and use that little detail in part of your work. A lot of times I'll do leaf demonstrations and when I do that, I tell people that I'm not making, I'm not forging a leaf. I'm forging, making a cool forging that makes people think of a leaf when they look at it. Same thing with these flowers. This is not a flower and it's not the representation of any particular kind of flower because I really don't like doing that. Um, I just want to make like a fantasy forging that makes people think about a flower because in my mind, if uh, people come up and look at my work and say, that's a flower, they're using their imagination. And I think it makes them more interested in the piece if it's not screaming, I'm a daffodil, you know, <laughs> or I'm a rose. This is what we're gonna do now. I've got, a, I've got my fire hopefully going real good over there. So I'm gonna do, I'll do this big one. So I'm just gonna put it in here. It's gonna take a while. And those outside ones are gonna heat up a lot faster than the inside one because it's bigger and it's also inside of all those little ones. So, and I want to get, I want the heat to get good and saturated through the whole thing. So I'm just leave it in there for a little bit and then I'll turn it and turn it and turn it. And then I'm gonna put it over here and then just Tap these things. Sounds pretty solid. So I'm going to put some more flux on it. could use a longer spoon. So once I get started with this, I have to keep it up until it's finished because getting it hot all the way through is what I want to do. This time I just made that initial tack 
hopefully own all of those. So you see, I think they're mostly welded. See how it's turning a dark color? So if it's not, what I wanna do, I'll mark that. So when it comes out this time, I'll make sure to pay special attention to that one. So I'm going to flex it again. Let the flux melt. So I'm finding my mark. Put that down right there and hit it even harder. See how it's everything is all one color. I think it's I think it's welded good. So that's going to be kind of the way it works. I'm going to go ahead. This is this is kind of how it's going to end up being. But I'm going to go ahead and pull these down like this, so that I can get to the. So I can get to this and cut it down like I was talking about, you know. Well, I see something that I like. It's not on all of them, but I see there's a little, a little depression where I hammered this onto this and it made a little depression. See, it's like a little groove. Anyway, it's got like a little groove there where this ran into this. And it's a really, really subtle thing, but it's another detail. And Lord knows, you just stay in this studio messing around by myself all the time. I have to find something to entertain me, you know? <laughs> So now all this uh, crust needs to come off of it. And the way I'll get rid of that is um, I have a tub of vinegar outside and I'll soak it in that. And all that crust will come off. But I could try to pop a lot of it off right now. See, I just, um, 
because the, the scale is going to heat up faster than the rest of the metal if it's cold and I can get some of that to fall off. a gate for the new iron studio 20 years ago. The top part of it is made all out of scraps that people had sent us from their studios, people who were important to the iron studio, to the, the history of the program and everything. That's the top section. And then across the bottom, everybody who was in that first class got to make something to put in the bottom panel. So I made something similar to this to put in the bottom panel. And it was inspired by Carl Blossfeldt's uh, black and white photographs um, of plants. Nothing in particular, again, just a cool forging. I was talking about the center of those flowers is made where you cut something off and leave this little slight connection. It's just another little detail. When, when you're tapering a piece of flat stock, and you start hitting it on um, this corner and that corner to make it pointy, um, you end up with something like this, kind of cupped out in the center. So I decided in instead of trying to fight that, I was just gonna work with it. And so um, I did that by pe putting a piece of flat stock on the anvil <clears throat> and then hammering like this, using what um, Frank Turley always called a slithering blow to um, just kind of encourage that metal out. And then it made these little ears on all these little parts. And again, it just made me happy. <laughs> this little inflation that I wanted to, to show. And um, if you, look on the internet you can see there are other pillows where i've um, twisted the fringe and 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 when i put them on there i twist it so that the twists go into each other like this and kind of look like a herringbone and um and then i etched um lace on this with acid so i took a plastic tablecloth and put it down on the metal before I fabricated the whole pillow thing and um, <clears throat> spray painted it and then that was the resist for the acid. So I got a lace texture on there. This one is titled Talons and I wanted it to look menacing and it's pretty sharp. This has those little um, cut off pieces for the center of the flower. So usually um, what I do after I finish something is uh, I sandblast it or I strip the scale off in acid and then neutralize it. And then I paint it with um, usually matte black paint. And um, this one was done like that. And then, um, it's, then I uh, warm it up and um, put wax on it and then wax it. So the wax brings out this cool texture. I want to show you some samples of other things that I've made using forge welding, um, the technique. And um, <clears throat> this is one that I'm particularly happy with. Um, it's a stick. <laughs> I was commissioned to make a chandelier for a house up at Grandfather Mountain uh, Country Club. I wanted to show you this. See these, these like little broken places? This is a 
demonstration of how that gets started. So I take this piece and bend it in half and forge weld it uh, kind of like I did <clears throat> this one here on the tip, but then open it up and then get that super hot and slam it down so it upsets, it makes it bigger. So it looks like a little nub. I've done a lot of experimental things, wrapping wires around stuff and forge welding it to the surface to make different kind of trims and stuff. And you know, I'm kind of obsessed with ribbons and stuff. And so this one is just, just kind of laying on the surface, but it is all one piece, but it, you can still see the, um, the structure of the wire. When this one, it's almost welded in there so you can't even see that it was wire. It just looks like little loops on the edge. Um, then this is, this is a sample of um, something I made. I made a series of ladies hats over the years. And this I made to look like a grow, get, grow grain ribbon. And it's just a whole bunch of little tiny wires lined up and um, wound around there and then forge welded together to just, just to make the surface of it. This is a very ancient traditional type of a scroll. So the way you make this, you take a piece of uh, flat stock and you taper it on both sides this way and sideways too and then you roll it up. And so, um, because it's tapered smaller over here than it is in here, you can get it to do this cool thing. Well, then when it was out straight like this, but tapered, I wrapped wire around it and forge welded it to the surface and then made this. I don't really do a lot of traditional blacksmithing stuff, but I do kind of do traditional blacksmithing stuff at the same time. It's just that um, it looks different. It's different imagery. But I liked this because I was kind of putting my own imprint on an, an ancient technique. I went to the Austin Forging Competition and uh, competed with Megan Crowley. And we made um, a hanging bunch of chili peppers. And um, so we were practicing and practicing and sending videos back and forth between North Carolina and Colorado getting ready for this competition. And, um, and we were gonna make chili peppers. And then I made one like this. The ones that we ended up making were not made like this because it just took too long. We only had three hours to make 20 peppers. So um, this one is made out of just a regular piece of pipe. But this one, I forge welded a piece of solid stock into the end of it so that I could really, you know, make it sassy like that. And it still wiggles on its stem. I made this one recently. It looks more like a piece of okra than a pepper to me. <laughs> but. Um, so I thought that was so cool. This is a commission that I'm doing. They're orchids. My friend who commissioned me to make it uh, sent me a whole box of real live orchids from Florida. This is the, this is the body of the orchid and then this little um, copper piece goes in here and it's gonna be soldered so it'll be still. This is what it is. I got this uh, plumbing pipe and they telescope into each other. Um, this is what it looks like when it's flat. And then um, I pretty much repose this part to be like this and um, and bend it all up. And then these parts go inside of there like that. 
and then this goes into the flower.